Hey guys, today we will be reviewing Challenger Coach Nice's OP.GG as well as his Mobilitics. Now, <clears throat> if you aren't on Reddit on r slash League of Legends for context, um, someone has just posted Nice's OP.GG and there's a bit of history here, but as you can see in the comments, there's a lot of flame for how much he charges. And yes, you know, $350 is a lot for coaching and I am not gonna flame him for that because honestly, if the demand is there, he can charge whatever he wants until the demand stops. From what I know about Nice, I, I'm not commenting on his actual coaching skills or anything like that, but from what I've heard of Nice's origins, he used to do coaching for $20 on live on stream. And then he became so popular that he literally didn't have time to do enough game reviews. He was getting too many requests for coaching. And so what do you do when you've got too many requests? You up your price. And if it keeps coming in, you just keep upping your price until you find that price point. That's basic capitalism. That's what any smart person um, would do in a capitalist society. So I'm not going to comment on his coaching ability or his business model. But what I am going to look at are his statistics in League of Legends. So as you can see, he is currently on the Korean server. He is about in the top 37,000 players, which puts him in the top 0.8% of the Korean server. Now that's pretty good top 0.8% of one of the most competitive ranked solo queue regions. That's really good. Uh, he's Diamond 3 with 25 LP, and he's got a 50% a fifty win rate over 180 games. And you kind of see that, you know, he can't even play that much league because he's probably so busy making content, building his coaching empire, and, you know, living a good life because he's getting paid decently well for a League of Legends coach. Now, what I can immediately see is there is a lot of champions here with um, some, you know, pretty average win rates. We've got Nocturne, for example, is his most played champion in um, the preseason uh, with, uh, with 42 games played with a 50% win rate. And so that immediately strikes to me, you know, if you're a coach, um, you wouldn't want to play a suboptimal champion. Now, he might have alternate reasons for... Um, playing Nocturne, maybe he's seen something, he's been told something, maybe he's coaching some players who are Nocturne. I honestly don't know. And to be honest, I don't think Nice's approach to solo queue would be to, let's say, his goal rank is to climb to Challenger. I honestly think he probably plays League of Legends to just keep on top of the latest trends. So maybe the Nocturne is the latest trend that he spotted and he's trying to figure it out a bit more. Um, as well as just, you know, keep his mind fresh and understand, well, he does coach people a lot for a lot of his time, and that's basically his business model. So it makes sense that he does play the game, and he's playing it at a better level than, you know, 99.2% of players. So he's definitely got the right to coach people, to give them advice. Um, you might not agree with advice. Maybe it's too aggressive. Maybe the way he does it isn't what you see but there's a high demand for him, and so he's allowed to do that. But back to his profile, so he plays a lot of champions. You can see on his Mobilitics, he has got top lane at his most played Fiora, and plus 440 LP game with a 55% win rate. I mean, if this guy's trying to ch climb back to Challenger or to Master to prove all the haters wrong, Fiora and maybe even Trindamir would seem like his most logic champions with a 55 and a 59. We can see he plays a bit of Karma, 45% win rate, not so good. We can see Trindamir mid with a 59% win rate, which is quite interesting. We can see Nocturne jungle, which we were talking about earlier. Um, we can see Karma top, and then we can see support jungle. So really, he does kind of similar to what I do, where I play every role across, um, you know, it's, sorry, every role across the game, because it keeps you up to date and refreshed and understanding what your the players you coaches needs you understand what they they are going through what the latest meta is for mid laners what are the strengths and weaknesses of each lane and you can provide meaningful insights when you are coaching your clients when you are coaching your players now back to his account so the first thing I think, you know, if he was trying to play for, you know, climbing in the quickest amount of time possible, I would say you just one trick Fiora and play a bit of Trindamir on the side when you get bored. But because of his um, job, his career, I would suggest his champion pool probably makes sense. And he's playing multiple roles so he can keep up to date with all the latest trends. 
The second thing I would talk about if I was looking at how we could improve Nisa's climbing would be his win rate. Uh, sorry, not his win rate. His win rate over his last 60 games is 47%. So whatever he's been doing recently, and again, I come back to that Nocturne, you know, his last 13 games, uh, last 12 games on him, 42% win rate, 1.68 KDA, you know, maybe unlucky games, but it seems like it's not working, as well as his Karma with a 14% win rate. Yes, these are small data sizes, so like seven games, 12 games. You don't want to make... Um, you don't want to make, I guess, conclusions based on, you know, small champion pool data, generally like to have at least like 30, 40 games to make decisions like that. But you can see trending wise that those champions probably aren't conducive or effective for climbing. Now, if I went back to him, um, what I would look at is his kill participation is really low, 39%. Obviously, Trindamy has a low kill participation play style. Trindamy is very much about split pushing and extending that lead by being a constant nuisance in side lanes, pushing down turrets. And if you do go that route, which obviously he does, he goes hole breaker. You can also see he's trying out some new stuff. So like Jack Show, he's using that. Um, so you can clearly see that he is testing a lot and trying a lot of different builds, which makes me again think that Nice isn't trying to like necessarily climb on this account. He's in the top 0.8%. I would say you don't really need to get that much higher with the majority of his clients who he's coaching are generally diamond and below. So I think he's in the perfect place and what he's doing is testing. And the fact that he's testing, you know, like Jack Show, Jack Show I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, he's trying, um, you know, there's not even, uh, th trying Gale Force the next game, back to Yak Show, back to Gale Force. He's constantly testing and he has a 58% win rate. I mean, that suggests that he's a pretty damn good player. Um, and they're the other basic big three things I have on him. He's playing a lot of roles, but for his career, it makes sense. His kill participation is really low, but in the context of his champion pool, particularly Trindamir, it's pretty decent. You know, it's still low on the low side, but it's getting him wins. So I wouldn't say it's a problem. I'd be interested to know his kill participation on Nocturne. Let's actually have a look at that. We can probably have a look at that. Yeah, so 43% on Nocturne. It's a little bit low. You'd probably be wanting that in the 45 to 50% kill participation range just so you're having enough impact. But he does have in his last 20 games on Nocturne a 55% win rate. Um, you know, his deaths are a little high. And overall, his deaths are... No, that's, that's not too high. That's not too high. That's pretty good. That's really good over 30 games, actually. To only die 2.7 times as Trinomir. That's a really good... Uh, KDA there. But overall, if I'm Nice, I would keep doing what he's doing. He's clearly playing to be a better coach, to stay up to date with the game, and to constantly understand the meta. And he's playing at a pretty high level. Like 99.2% of players are never going to play at his rank. He's he's playing in the top 8% of one of the most competitive regions um, in the world. So, as I said, like you can disagree with his coaching, you can disagree with how much he charges, but clearly what he does works. Um, the demand for him is through the roof. You can see his content on YouTube gets a lot of views, and regardless, I guess, of what you think of him as a player, objectively, he's in the top 0.8% of League of Legends players. So, he's a bloody good player. Um, he's clearly good at what he does, and the business model he's built around what he does is clearly successful. And so, yeah, I wish the best of luck to him. So, yeah, um, that, that's the end of the OP.GG, really. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys actually want your profile reviewed, I'm going to leave a link in the description below, as well as the original Reddit post where I got this inspiration from, because um, obviously I don't want to take credit from this guy, but I thought, hey, I do profile reviews. Why not review Coach Nisa's profile? As always, guys, cheers, good luck on the Rift, and I'll see you on the next video.